Okay, in this presentation we are going to look at the Pareto distribution. In this instance it's the Pareto type 1 distribution. Okay, so remember that because that's an important detail. The claim severity for an auto liability insurance coverage policy uh, coverage is modelled by the Pareto type 1 distribution. Okay, with a shape parameter of alpha equals 2.5 and a scale parameter of 1000. Now that means that essentially the probability of being greater than 1000 is 1, which is to say that they are all greater than 1000. The, and it's the minimum, it's the lowest possible value for the Pareto type 1 distribution. The insurance policy pays up to a limit of 1200 per claim. Okay, so what happens is that if the if the claim has, happens to be one thousand two hundred and fifty, you only get one thousand two hundred. If the claim is one thousand five hundred, you only get this. So it's sort of an upper limit of what can be claimed. Okay, now this uh, creates an interesting scenario with regard to the Pareto type one distribution. Now. I'm going to look at this from the point of view as a probability distribution, okay? That's the sort of the main sort of focus of how we look at these questions. So that's the sort of how I navigate my way through these questions. Uh, so I'm coming at it from the point of view as the mathematics point of view rather than the sort of insurance industry point of view. Okay, now, um, because of, just to save time, I'm going to, and just for the complexity of this, uh, I'm going to sort of just hit the main details. So the overall mean for the Pareto type 1 random variable in this instance is e to the x, oh, sorry, e of x, okay, lambda times theta divided by lambda minus 1. So in this case, it is uh, 2.5 times 1,000 divided by 2.5 uh, minus 1, okay? So that means the average claim size before we get into this upper limit stuff, the actual cost of each claim on average is 1,666.66, okay? So, you know, a lot of people are not going to get their full um, insurance policy payout. Anyway, so what we have to do here is calculate, sorry, I just actually have to sort of, that's a conditional there. C compute the conditional mean of x where x is less than some threshold t. Okay, actually here the threshold is uh, 1,200. Okay, so expected value of x given that x is less than 1,200. Now that's just part of the calculations we need. Okay, we also have to find the probability that x is less than 1,200. Okay, as well. Now here the threshold is 1,200 and we're interested in the mean of all values in this interval, okay? Which is essentially what I'm stating there, okay? So we're gonna denote this conditional mean as ML. So essentially there's gonna sort of, I'm breaking the interval up into two parts, okay? Uh, between 1,000 and uh, 1,200, okay? And that's my lower interval. And the upper interval is essentially anything over uh, 1,200. Now that actually is, now the, the bar there, okay? So that's the uh, excess mean loss, okay? So that's the expected value of x minus d, given that x is greater than d. Now this is a sort of standard result, okay? So hopefully you should have seen this before. If not, you're probably going a little bit too far and just go back to these excess mean loss type things. Here, it is the uh, expected value of x minus d, okay? So how, what's the probability of it being a, uh, x being greater than a certain value, d? Usually d means deductible. It is d divided by alpha minus one, okay? So if a claim is, let's say, 1,500, x minus d is 300, okay? And this is the expected value of all of those type of claims, if you get me. Now, that's not what we actually need in this instance. What we need is the expected value of uh, x, given that x is greater than t, okay? Now here, I'm just going to change it t to threshold. Okay, D is deductible. 
So I'm just slightly changing the notation a bit just to sort of get back to random variables rather than probability distributions, okay? So essentially what we're going to do there is add t back into our expected value. So we end up here with t times alpha divided by alpha minus 1, okay? Just look at that for a second, actually. This is a conditional mean given that x is greater than a certain value, okay? That's interesting because, let's go back up here, it actually has the same shape as that, okay? So we didn't really need to do all that work, really, okay? Now, in this case, with t equals 1,000 and alpha equal to 2.25, the expected value of x given, actually, I should write that around again because the typesetting is a little bit off, is equal to t times alpha divided by alpha minus 1, and that is 2,000. Okay. Now, um, I'm going to call that mu because... That's the mean of the upper interval, okay? The expected value of the upper bit interval. So if a claim is greater than 1,200, for all claims greater than 1,200, the expected value of those claims in that interval is 2,000, okay? So, but what's going to happen is that only anybody who has a claim greater than 1,200 is only going to get 1,200, okay? So what we have to do is adjust this value later on. Anyway, I digress. So, uh, the probability of being greater than or equal to x, this is just the survival function, okay, it's standard result. Uh, theta divided by x, the power of alpha, here it is probability of x is that is greater than its threshold is 1000 divided by 1200, the power of 2.5, 63%, 63 63.393% of cases are in excess of the threshold. So 63.3%, nearly 63.4% of the customers do not get the full value of the damage. They only get 1,200, and that applies to 63% of them. Okay, so that is the upper bound. Okay, now I'm going to look at the lower bound. And essentially, I'm going to use what we have there. Let's get the inverse of that, or the recip the not the inverse of that, 1 minus that, 0 0.63393, that is 0 0.6, 0 0.36607. Okay, you don't have to go uh, use decimal places to the same extent as I do, but, you know, it just, uh, you know, just when you're working on your calculators, okay? Okay, I just had to pause for a second there. Okay, we know that the overall mean is 1,666.6. And this is a weighted mean of the claims that go under the threshold of 1,200, okay, which is 36% of them, and the claims that are over the threshold of 1,200, which is 63.39% of them. And the average of those claims above the threshold is 2,000, okay? So we know, for, know that the overall... Uh, mean is 1,666, so that means using the process of deduction, bit of multiplication, uh, we can work out the fact that it the this ML value, which is the mean of the lower interval, is 1,089.409. Okay, so for all of the claims that are between 1,000 and 1,200, uh, 1, the mean of the claims is 1089.409 okay now so that's most that's the hard work done essentially this is the key value that we needed okay we're not finished yet okay so um this is without this upper uh, policy that any claim greater than 1200 gets uh, that value so this is without the cap okay so what happens now is, I'm going to introduce this cap. So where it was with, uh, 2000 beforehand, now that they're all going to get 1200, no matter what, so the expected value of that 
is 1,200, and it's still 63% of them, 63, 0.63393, okay? Nothing changes over here, okay? So the mean for the lower, uh, everybody under the threshold, the mean of all those claims is still 1,089.409, and it's still, uh, there's still 36% of the claims are less than the threshold, okay? So, under this new regime where we introduce this cap of 1,200, the new mean is 1,159.516, okay? So, that is the limited expectation given that, you know, you limit the, the maximum to 1,200. Now, just as a quick remark, this is a very long way of doing it, and you probably might sort of spot that. Why didn't I just integrate that? It's just that the Pareto type 1 is very tricky. It's not actually easy to do that for first principles using straightforward integration with the Pareto type 1 distribution. You have to use this sort of long-winded approach, and even then, you're using standard results, okay, which are derived elsewhere, okay? So you're just using some standard results to take a, slight, a scenic route to get your answer, okay? Now, really, for the Pareto distribution, knowing that this was actually good to give you this, was, or, you know, done all the work, okay? So it's just to start of using a bit of lateral thinking. Okay, we'll leave it there.